Let's now talk about applying VSEPR theory and look at a specific example as we go through the general process. So, I call this applying VSEPR theory in four easy steps. And let's look at the example of SOCl2, a very interesting molecule known as thionyl chloride. The first step when applying VSEPR theory is to get a Lewis structure in hand, and that may involve, for example, drawing a Lewis structure from a given structural formula. So SOCl2 contains sulfur, oxygen, and two chlorines. So let's start by counting the number of valence electrons that we've got within these four atoms. Sulfur has six, oxygen has six, and each of the chlorines has seven for a total of 14. So we've got six plus six plus 14 equals 26 valence electrons total. Nothing too fancy there with charges since the molecule is neutral overall. So we've got 26 valence electrons to work with here. Sulfur is the least electronegative atom in this structure, and so it's most likely to be at the center with the highest valence. Oxygen and the two chlorines are likely to be bonded around the sulfur atom. The connections between sulfur and oxygen and the two chlorines knock out six of the valence electrons, and so now we've got 20 left to distribute as non-bonding lone pairs or multiple bonds. For the chlorines to be neutral, they need seven valence electrons each, and so I'm gonna go ahead and add three lone pairs around each of the chlorines to bring them up to a total of seven valence electrons. That knocks out six plus six equals 12 valence electrons, bringing us down to eight valence electrons left. To make oxygen neutral, we need to give it formally six valence electrons. It's already got one, and so a good way to give oxygen six valence electrons is to add two lone pairs for four more, and then a multiple bond between sulfur and oxygen, such that oxygen formally has one of the two electrons in that multiple bond. That's six electrons accounted for, and that leaves us with only two left, and the only atom that doesn't have its appropriate number of valence electrons is the sulfur at the center. And so adding a lone pair on that central sulfur completes the Lewis structure. We see that this is an example of a molecule that violates the octet rule at sulfur, but nonetheless, every atom is neutral and that violation is okay since sulfur is a third row element. So this is the Lewis structure of SOCl2. And that's step one of Vesper theory, applying the skill of drawing a Lewis structure if necessary. In many cases, you'll be given a Lewis structure or the Lewis structure will be clear from the formula. The next step is to determine the steric number of the central atom. This is as simple as counting the number of electron groups around the central atom. Don't forget about lone pairs. The sulfur has a lone pair, and so it has a total of four electron groups in SOCl2. It's easy to forget that the lone pair is there and count only three valence electron groups in this structure. The next step, using either something on a crib sheet or your notes that are handy, is to map the steric number onto the corresponding electron group arrangement. And this is one of the most valuable things that you can put on a crib sheet, is the relationship between the steric number and the corresponding electron group arrangement. For a steric number of four, the corresponding electron group arrangement, as we know, is tetrahedral, and I've drawn a general example of the tetrahedral arrangement on this slide. The final step is to place non-bonding lone pairs in their proper positions and determine the molecular geometry. So we can put the single lone pair on the sulfur in any of the four positions. Here I've put it in the dash position, and I put the two chlorines in two of the other positions and the oxygen in the final one to generate the overall structure. Since this structure has three bonding electron groups and one non-bonding group, it has a pyramidal molecular geometry. Note the correspondence with something like NH3. NH3 has only single bonds, but since we count a multiple bond as a single electron group, there's an analogy we can make to NH3 here. Both structures have a pyramidal molecular geometry. It's as simple as that. So applying Vesper theory in general amounts to this four-step process. Draw a Lewis structure based on a formula you're given, if necessary. Determine the steric number of the central atom is step two map that steric number onto its corresponding electron group arrangement, and remember there will only be one, there's only one way to put electron groups as far apart from one another as possible. And then step four is to place non-bonding lone pairs in their appropriate positions to determine the molecular geometry. 
This is trickiest for the trigonal bipyramidal geometry, which has in equivalent positions where we could put lone pairs. Remember along these lines that lone pairs in the trigonal bipyramidal arrangement occupy equatorial positions. That's important to remember when you're determining the molecular geometry of a structure with the trigonal bipyramidal arrangement.